Any citizen desiring to address the hospital board to turn in a speaker card to the board secretary. If the citizen comment pertains to any item on the agenda today, the comment will be heard earlier in the meeting. Otherwise, it will be heard toward the end. Speakers are asked to limit their comments to Darryl, minutes. Henry Vendors and suppliers of other, has joined other the meeting. persons seeking hospital contracts awarded on a competitive basis are reminded that their ability to address the board may be restricted by the terms of the invitation for bid or other purchasing criteria. Lastly, the board has established a claims adjustment review panel comprised of representatives of the medical administration and legal counsel to view and negotiate the settlement of claims. According to the board, will not entertain comments on or discuss or negotiate claims at this meeting. Okay. Uh, Approval of the orders of the day. I am asking for a motion to approve the orders of the day. Second. Those in favor, respond by saying yes. Yes. Those none. Thank you. It carries. I seek approval of the minutes of the meeting of July 19th. All those in favor, respond by saying yes. Yes. Opposed. Thank you. It carries. Medical staff reports. Uh, Dr. Wazen is away. So, Dr. Lichtenstein, I believe you have a motion to make. I, I do. Thank you very much. Um, this is item 5B. Uh, on behalf of the leadership of SMH Sarasota, I would ask for a motion approving Sarasota Memorial Hospital, Sarasota Physician Privileging Forms. For general and complex oncology surgery, as recommended by the SMH Sarasota Medical Executive Committee. Move. Second. 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 Okay. Uh, all those in favor, respond by saying yes. Yes. Opposed. The motion carries. Dr. Fiorica. Yes. On behalf of the leadership for SMH Venice Medical Staff. I'd ask for a motion approving Sarasota Memorial Hospital Venice Physician Privilege and Forms for Physician uh, for General and Complex Oncology Surgery as recommended by the SMH Venice Medical Executive Committee. All those in favor, respond by saying yes. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, secretary's report, reports are lodged. Secretary, Sarah, please. Thank you. Our next meeting will be Thursday, September 9th, 2021 at 5.01 p.m. where we will do the preliminary budget and millage hearing. And then on Monday, September 20th, 2021, from 10 to 11 a.m., the investment committee. From 11 a.m. to noon, the audit committee. From noon to 12.30, closed session hospital board meeting. From 12.30 to 2, board lunch, issues and financial review. 2 to 3.30, SMH Physician Service, Inc., First Physicians Group Annual Meeting. From 3.30 to 4.30, the board meeting. And then at 5.01, the final budget in the lunch hearing. Thank you, Sarah. Treasurer's report, Joe Deepardell, our treasurer. Uh, yes, Jim. Um, I move approval of the bad debt and charity care for the month ending July 31st, 2021, in the amount of $11 $24,000. Second. second. All those in favor respond by saying yes. 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 Motion carries. Next up is the financial highlights. Bill Bolton, our chief financial officer. Bill. Thank you. I have the highlights for July. <clears throat> and we'll start off with total revenue and rating agency format for the system. Total revenue for July, 114,326,000, compared to a budget of 90,782,000. Fiscal year to date, and this represents 10 months of activity, total revenue of 995,493,000, compared to a budget of 925,415,000. Total expenses for the system, for July, 
compared to a budget of 86,170,000. Fiscal year to date, total expenses of 894,000,000 compared to a budget of 8,641,000. Operating income for the system in the rating agency format through July. 20,170,000, which was an operating margin of 26.7%. And this did include um, $14 million of provider relief fund recognition compared to a budget of 4,612,000, an operating margin of 5.1%. This year to date, again, this is 10 months of activity, operating income of 101,013,000. So far, an operating margin of 13.5%, compared to a budget of 51,774,000, we budgeted for an operating margin through July of 5.6%. Continuing with statistics for the hospital, this is all fiscal year to date numbers. The average daily occupancy has been 647 patients compared to a budget of 600. The average acute length of stay for this fiscal year has been 4.65 days compared to the last year's 4.48 days. Admissions through 10 months, 37,116 compared to a budget of 36,972. Hospital surgery cases through July fiscal year, 20,239 compared to a budget of 20,909. And so far through 10 months, we've had 3,220 births compared to a budget of 3,280. Continuing with statistics, outpatient registrations through 10 months, 409,367 compared to a budget of 405,709. Emergency care center registrations, 96,815, compared to a budget of 103,449. And wrapping up with case mix index, through 10 months, our case mix index for all patients, 1.87, and for Medicare patients, 2.01. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you, Bill. Uh, Mission and Planning, Sharon Westler, Peters, Chairperson. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. On August 16th today, Sharon Rausch, President of Sarasota Memorial Hospital, Venice, and William Wojan, Chief Financial Officer, presented on the Bed Tower expansion for SMH Venice. Sharon began the presentation by providing an update on the current scope of SMH Venice and the anticipated growth in South County. Next, she discussed the details of the additional inpatient bed tower. The tower will add 68 private inpatient suites and 34 shell suites to accommodate future growth. The 68 private inpatient suites will include 34 medical cardiac beds and 34 medical surgical beds. The tower will be seamlessly integrated with the current facility design when it opens in spring 2024. For the final part of the presentation, Mr. Wojcin reviewed the financials for the project. There was discussion of the plans and so based on the foregoing, I move approval of the funding for the design and construction of the SMH Venice Bed Tower expansion in the amount of $1,013,663 as recommended by the Mission and Planning Committee. We have a second. Sorry. All those in favor respond by saying yes. 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 Motion carries. Continue, please. For the next presentation, Director of Pharmacy David Youngs and Manager of Pharmacy Process Operations Edward McLean presented on pharmacy robotics. Dave gave an overview of the pharmacy department and their current state of distribution. 
Next, at presented details on the future of pharmacy automation using advanced robotic technology and related efficiency and error reduction benefits. The final presentation to the committee was presented by John Salt, Director of Facilities Management. John gave an update on the hospital equipment maintenance system, which provides state-of-the-art compliance, maintenance, and facility operations management system to SMH. The system creates a centralized workflow that is organized and efficient as the system continues to grow and expand facilities. The meeting was then concluded. And that concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Finance Committee. Or Planner Chair, please. Yes, thank you. The minutes of the joint meeting of the Finance and Audit Committees held on July 19, 2021 were approved. Bill Walton, CFO, presented proposals for the fiscal year 2022 operating and capital budgets. The proposed fiscal year 2022 operating budget has an operating margin of 5.5%, and an ad valorem millage rate of 1.0420 mills. The proposed fiscal year 2022 capital budget totals 325, no, $325,446,000, inclusive of funds to be spent on the Cancer Institute, SMH Venice, routine capital items, and other strategic growth projects. I move approval of the recommendation of the Finance Committee to approve the fiscal year 2022 budget, which sets the fiscal year 2022 preliminary millage rate at 1.0420, which is the same as the current millage rate. I also move affirmation that the board has set the first public hearing to adopt the proposed budget and millage rate for September 9, 2021 at 5.01 p.m. and the second public hearing to adopt the budget and the millage rate for September 20, 2020 at 5, oh, 20, I'm sorry, and the millage rate for September 20, 2021 at 5.01 p.m., both hearings to be held in the old boardroom on the first floor of the Sarasota Memorial Hospital. May I have a second, please? Second. All those in favor respond by saying yes. 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 Please continue, Brent. Diane Settle, VP of Revenue Cycle, and Pam Ramhofer, Chief Information Officer, presented a, a proposal to replace two Revenue Cycle computer systems, which we have used since 2003 and 2006. They proposed to replace AM PFM with Allscripts Sunrise Enterprise Registration and Sunrise Financial Manager, and to replace Streamline Health ECM with Highland OnBase ECM. The replacement systems will address patient safety initiatives, enterprise platform capability, interoperability capability, patient experience improvements, and labor and supply chain control. I move approval of the expenditure of an amount not to exceed $10,614,000 for software, hardware, internal labor, and consultants to convert core revenue cycle systems using all scripts in Highland and budgeted as $5,926,000 in fiscal year 2022, $3,729,000 in fiscal year 2023, and $959,000 in fiscal year 2024, as recommended by the Finance Committee. May I have a second, please? All those in favor respond by saying yes. Yes. Say yes. no. Motion carries. Thank you, Brett. This concludes my report. Leslie Dunn, David Dunn, and Mr. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sorry, let's wait for a screen. Can I have a question, please? Yes, Daryl. Yes, you have a question, Daryl? Yes, I do. Are we all are we not already using all scripts? Yes, we are. Do we, what do I do? I'm replacing it with a new version or what? We're, re we're replacing a module of all scripts. It's a, it's a large system, so you have to re update systems within it every so often.
Okay. Here for my report, Mr. Chair. Yes, please. Okay. So I'm going to start off my report um, like I do each and every month, look at our organizational report card. And we have five areas of concentration on here. The first being uh, service, and we look at our patient, um, our system patient experience. And within that, we look at our likelihood of recommending. We have a goal of having eight out of 10 service areas be at or equal to or greater than the 95th, I mean, the 75th percentile. I'm happy to report that we are hitting that at nine, we're exceeding that and having nine out of 10. I'll show you the details on that here in a minute. In the people area concentration, we have a goal of our, having our new hire retention percentage of regular full and part-time employees hired in during FY 2021 that are still employed as of September 30th, 2021. We have a goal of having 83% meeting that 83%, and we are uh, exceeding that as well at 89.11%. In the quality uh, concentration, we have our goal of having our infection prevention, which is our overall, a combined overall standardized infection rate being less than 0.88. Happy to report that we are exceeding that at 0.69. And just to remind the board, than an expected number or a, or a national average is a 1.0. So we already set our goal uh, quite a bit lower than the national uh, numbers. In the finance area, we have our organizational finance um, goal is our operating margin e equaling our budget or exceeding. Uh, Bill's already gone through that, but we have 5.5% uh, margin uh, in our budget and we're projecting to exceed that and be at 12.2%. In the growth area, we have two goals. The first being our inpatient admissions and observation outpatients being at 51,164 for the year. Uh, we are projecting to exceed that at 52,192. And our outpatient registrations, are our goal is to have 977,227. Uh, we are projecting to come in a little bit short of that at this point at 972,712. Sorry. All right, uh, patient experience report card, I'm gonna look at the details of our, our experiences and just to orient you on the map. Uh, the far left hand is the different areas that we look at from likelihood of recommending. The middle column is what our actual score is. Uh, the next column over the first green column is the national median score. And then finally is the, the far right, the 75th percentile score, which is what we compare our, have our goals set against. Um, I think it's very impressive that we are coming in at nine out of 10 um, of our area, our areas being at the 75th percentile or higher. The one that's a little low right now is emergency care center at the main hospital. And um, I think it is, um, if you look at the volumes that are going through there, you can understand why they're um, struggling to meet the 75th. Um, and, uh, but they are greater than the national average or 50th percentile. Next page over is, um, I am happy to report to the public and to the board that SMH was named a US News 2022 uh, Best Hospital uh, by US News and World Report. Uh, for the first time in our history, we were nationally ranked number 39 in the nation for rehabilitation. Um, I think that, quite honestly, is, is the result of what we set out to do um, about eight years ago when we built a new rehab hospital and rethought the entire business. Um, so really it's something to be proud of for our staff that's down there. And then we are recognized as high performing in 15 uh, conditions and procedures that are listed on the screen above. We also had another first uh, this past month, SMH makes best employees for women list uh, by Forbes uh, 2021. Uh, we were ranked among America's best employers for women, just the top, uh, just the top 300 companies recognized in 2021. Um, so less than 0.2% of US companies with uh, greater than 1,000 employees. SMH placed in top 12% of companies across all states in top 10% of the awardees in healthcare and social category. Rankings based on independent, <coughs> excuse me, surveys of 50,000 plus um, employee 
employees on topic ranging from atmosphere, working conditions, and development to pay equity, diversity, and leadership structure. We heard Frank Morgan talk about this earlier, but we have where SMH is expanding the use of our innovative um, COVID therapies. Uh, since the beginning of COVID-19 pandemic, um, Sarasota Memorial has been able to give patients access to many promising treatments and therapies. Some recent examples include SMH is currently one of more than a dozen research sites across the nation participating in the trial of IC14, which researchers um, hope will reduce dangerous levels of inflammation in hospitalized COVID-19 patients. And SMH is among a, a number of hospitals allocated a supply of monoclonal antibody therapy for non-hospitalized patients who have been diagnosed with mild to moderate cases of COVID-19 within the past 10 days and have a high risk of severe disease or hospitalization. The infusion therapy has provide, been provided to more than 500 SMH outpatients since November of 2020. And, if it's, and, and just to remind the public, this is available by physician referral only. Uh, we are in the process of standing up a second site and about to double our capacity um, in this. COVID surge calls for renewed visitor restrictions. Just two months ago, we were able uh, we were able open to our we were able to open our doors to additional visitors, renew, resuming normal visiting um, hours, thanks to a drop in hospitalizations, increasing immunity from COVID nineteen vaccines, and a decline in cases across community. Unfortunately, those trends did not continue, and due to a recent surge in cases, we are once again restricting visitors with limited exceptions for everyone's protection. We hope to once again relax visitor restrictions as soon as it's safe to do so. We continue to strongly urge anyone who is unvaccinated to get the shot and do their part to protect themselves, their families, and those in the community. SMH announces additions to our medical um, staff leadership. As Sarasota Memorial continues its transformation into a regional health system with multiple facilities, we are enhancing our medical leadership structure to better support our growth and maintain highest standards of care. Critical care pulmonologist, Dr. Joseph Seaman, has been named Chief Medical Officer for SMH Sarasota Campus. Dr. Seaman, congratulations and thank you for taking the role. <laughs> OBGYN, Kyle, Dr. Kyle Gardner has been named Associate Chief Medical Officer for the SMH Venice Campus. The new ACMOs will have day-to-day -day administrative responsibility for each of the hospital's quality of care, medical education, and, doc and departments that support those functions. Both will report to Dr. Jim Fiorica, who is the Chief Medical Officer for, his, for the Sarasota Memorial Healthcare System. Been a world leader in thyroid and parathyroid surgery joins SMH. SMH and First Physicians Group recently welcomed Dr. Ralph Tofano, a widely recognized leader in the management of thyroid and parathyroid disease, to oversee our first multi specialty practice dedicated to the care and treatment of patients with thyroid nodules, cancers, and other diseases and disorders with the, of the thyroid and parathyroid glands. Respected across the world, for his research and innovative treatments, Dr. Tufano comes to Sarasota from Baltimore, where he spent the last 20 years as a professor, researcher, practicing surgeon, and director of Multidisciplinary Thyroid Tumor Center and Division of, of Head and Neck um, Endocrine Surgery at Johns Hopkins um, University School of Medicine. So just a big uh, welcome to Dr. Tufano and his family to Sarasota, and uh, we are looking forward to uh, building that program with them. Construction progress um, at SMH Venice, installation of computers, mobile equipment, and furniture and surgery, cath labs, pharmacy, and lab are now underway. Installation of exterior features, the pergola, fountain, landscaping has begun. And we're hiring full-time staff um, exceeds now 75%. The per and the project remains on schedule to open in fall 2001. You can see a couple pictures um, that were recently taken. Progress, construction progress on our oncology tower is also progressing. 
The Brian D. Jellison Cancer Institute signage has been installed. Front drive fountain installation is in progress. Painting, mechanical, electrical plumbing, and, and equipment installation are underway on various floors. And this project also remains on schedule to be open in fall of 2021. Thank you very much, Lori. Vaccination, this is our shot. We continue to encourage everyone to get the shot and help in the surge of COVID-19 disease. To those who haven't already, please get vaccinated as soon as possible at your local retail pharmacy or at one of the local Depart Department of Health centers. And I am happy to take any questions. Thank you, Ms. Thank Pat. you, David. Karen, do we have anyone who's interested in speaking to the group? No, sir, we do not. Thank you. Carol Ann? No. Having completed our agenda, we stay adjourned. Thank you, everyone.